I lived with my mom, you know, a single parent. You know, my my dad wasn't around most of the time. Actually, most of the time when I go on radio, I say it because mm. I got to know my dad when I was close to 40 years. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, and, wow. And I say it because I want people to learn that there are no excuses. That's right. I've, I've met many people who said that my parents weren't there this and that wasn't there that's why i couldn't make it there are no excuses wow but again my mother was a strong woman who mm. wanted the best out of me so she was disciplining me just like a meal a meal would discipline me make sure that wow. i'm on the right path and she she celebrated things that i was doing right so that's the kind of upbringing that i have but I grew up from the ghettos. What was your father all these 40 years that you didn't know him? Uh, living outside Ghana. My oh. father live, lives in France. He's still alive. We're very close together now. Just my mother is passed on. But, wow. you know, we talk. We share time together. You know, I, 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 I missing him around that age was was not too good, but I think growing up has taught me many lessons. It might not be his fault. It might be different situations that men go through. I have been, I've had my fair share, fair share. Okay. Of, of, mm. of what men go through. Mm. 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 So were they both Ashantis or they were of some other ethnicities? My mom is an Equipim mm. and, and Fanti. Mm. It's my dad who is an Ashanti. Ah, whoa. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> what a combination. <laughs> fire, 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 fire. <laughs> Mickey or Sam uh, who is my and, ghost? And I'm a girl by birth. Oh my God, <laughs> certainly, certainly. Yeah. I mean, I mean, when we talk about entertainment in Ghana, yeah. your name can never be taken out of it. Thank you. Tell very me, much. at what age did you decide that you wanted to be an entertainer? I think that I can't reverse it, memory as much as I can, but mm. it was very tender age. I think between six years seven years eight years i was already making people laugh my family i was telling them jokes mm. and all of that but mm. in my 10th year when i was i think in class five you know then there was this inter schools drama competition that was organized for the government schools around i mean some private schools participated but i went to the government school site too mm. accra newtown for primary school mm. so ANT4. So we participated, and then the teacher, uh, class five teacher, Mr. Asan, uh, drew up a, a play, and he made me the main character of the play. You know, the lost ring the play was about a king who loses his ring and uh, uh, his wife's ring and promises anybody who finds it can get up to half of his kingdom. A guy finds it, and when he's bringing it, one of his security guys says that whatever you get from the king, I'll share with you before I allow you to meet the king. So when the guy takes the ring to the king, the guy tells the king that I don't want half of your kingdom. I want 500 lashes on my bare back. Wow. So that he will share with the... <laughs> 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 because he's also made promise, a promise that he will share everything the king gives. So exactly. I played the king in that a production. Wow. And um, the play was the most popular performance uh, for that year uh. so obviously i i was told in, in that format that i was the best actor for the season wow and That's i've never looked back since and then. it was written by Hassan. which Hassan was this with mr Hassan? mr Hassan, Hassan. yes afari Hassan. alfred Hassan, not afari his name is Af alfred Hassan. alfred Hassan. Uh, yes he's, he's still alive one day I was shooting a commercial and he drove past by and he stopped. Wow. And I told him that you started this journey when I was 10 years. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I know another Afaria son who is somewhere around Medina. I don't know if he's still alive or not. If you're still alive, yeah. God bless you. And uh, he wrote one of these wonderful books, Christmas in the City. Okay. On a pay setters. Well, this one also goes out to you. Today, Miki Osaibekun yeah. is my guest. Now, walk me to your education. Which schools did you go to? Yes, like I said, I started from the ANT ANT Saito, and I went to Kimbu JSS. Mm. Yes, Kimbu JSS. Mm. It, it was that then an experimental JSS. Now I am told that it's a secondary technical 
senior high school. But, right. but when we attended, it was a, 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 an experimental GSS because mm. then the GSS system was, was not in, in force, but it was being experimented at a level. So uh, we were the guinea pigs, actually. Mm. Mm. <laughs> right. But I always say that the level of GSS that was experimented on us it's not what I see. No, it's far higher than today. Yeah, these days. I had that one as well. Yeah, so mm. I see that as something that should be looked at because right. at the experimental stage, most of the things, that's when you see students go to class with T-squares, exactly. drawing boards, mm -hmm. and all of that. Oh, my God. And you needed that before you get into the classroom these exactly. days. Exactly. And I went through Adontin Secondary School. Adontin. Yes. Mm. I trained as a teacher at the Accra Teachers Training College mm. now, University College of Education, you know. And then I went out to do some filmmaking with New York Film Academy. And then I went on to Leeds Metropolitan to also do filming. And then I also do f football coaching mm. on uh, along the line. So... Uh, I try to learn as many skills as possible. As possible. Interesting. Mm. Now, having gone to um, schools in Accra, mm. somebody would have ex expected that your secondary school would also be in Accra, maybe at Chimota or some other school. Why did you go to a village school like um, at Odonting Secondary no, no, School? No, 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 no. I disagree with you. Mm. It's not a village school. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's at a bri. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, wow. I thought it was somewhere yeah. around there. There are two schools, big schools at a bri. There, there's a bri girls. And there's Adonti Secondary School. And 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 hear this joke. A big girls, their motto is be poor so high. Mm -hmm. Be poor so high. Yes. And I don't think our motto is bright in your corner. Interesting. Okay. One day my grandmother asked me, my grandmother is from a brie. Mm. So he asked me that, oh, now a brie girls own motto no say be poor so high. Now I don't think for no some more in the day. Now I'm saying to crew musu. Because it's a corner we are trying to brighten. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Gamble! Gamble! You know, I don't think it's it's and I'm happy to say that uh the 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 creative people who have come out of Adonti. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There's this gentleman who produces uh Ifira. Yeah. Michael Ando. Yes, yes. 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 He was an entertainment prefect mm -hmm. two years before me. Mm -hmm. I also became the entertainment prefect. Of the school at the oh, time. Oh, interesting. So, yes. Yeah. I don't think it's like the, I don't think of the Kuapim State. A Brie is mm -hmm. the I don't think of the Kuapim State. So, the school comes off like that. It's a good school. Interesting. In fact, um, one of my university mates went to Adonting and we always teased him and said, you are yeah. from a village school and all that. So oh. I intentionally pushed that too. I mean, <laughs> wherever you are, Jamal, this one also goes out to you. So Master Richard is here. He yeah. went to your school, you see. Yes. All right. So Master Richard, we're going to go into some of the interesting things. I mean, you were in taxi driver. We yeah. were told that you were not paid that much. We saw how TT ended begging and asking people to support him and all that. What really happened on the set of the taxi driver? What happened on the set of taxi driver for me was the experience I picked. Mm. I always look at the positive side of stuff. Mm. You understand? I think that taxi driver for me could say arguably, arguably is one of the projects that's made me who I am today. That's true, true. So, and you cannot count that in money. Mm. Uh -huh. But with regards to financial returns, I think that it was nothing to write home about. And I'm saying this clearly because the system hasn't changed. Mm. You know, people consider showbiz or those of us in that area of endeavor as part-time business. Mm. You understand? Mm. They don't really understand that that is what puts food on your table. Right. They think that, oh, see me, I don't remember me. Oh, mm. you know, I don't feed kids, my kids with, but people do not regard that as something that that should entice them. But people do not regard that as something that you earn you so much. So that was a difficulty at the time. And I think sponsorship also contributed mm. to that. But um, for me to say that Taxi driver was something that I've never regretted being a part of. And mm. it added so much to my career. So 
uh, you know uh, if you count that in money you can't see anything mm. uh-huh. mm. here showbiz doesn't pay that's, that's right it's as simple as that mm. and we need to make some intentional efforts about it. interesting interesting now how did radio come in i know you were with radio gold and some other radio stations yeah. that we we'll talk about later right mm. radio was part of the love that i have for the arts mm. i listened to radio religiously mm. i mean i used to listen to charlie sam i used to listen to tommy and unforcing wow you know and all of these great broadcasters you know dusty win mm. you know and coming down i was listening to komla dumont mm. i was listening to kwami sefakai i'm saying this because these were my seniors in the game when i picked it up when i got the opportunity to be on radio it started off from radio actually started off from voice of legon okay oh wow that's where i started okay you know and then i got pushed or invited mm. to work at gbc fm oh wow yeah to oh, host wow. a saturday entertainment show mm. it was a variety entertainment show on saturdays on gbc fm at the time that was the only you know fm at the time ap with, apart from the few that had started so that led me on to think that i could do well on radio and then when atlantis came up i tried to find employment from off, off atlantis but big j the owner then told me i had to be trained from gbc mm. so i went back to gbc where i host this saturday entertainment show mm. it was a recorded show mm. and then spoke to samia boa who was then a trainer there and he organized a school for myself and then some seven others but after the school only about two of the people got employment with atlantis so mm. uh, six five of us couldn't so i started looking for the opportunity okay on radio mm. and then one day god found me that favor of mr buffo bonnie mm. of radio gold mm. yeah he saw me and thought that he could give me the opportunity and then he started me right from the grassroots mm. when i started radio i was playing from midnight to 4 a.m wow yeah that's when i was playing but and what were you playing uh, okay actually when i started most of the radio stations that were around were playing r and b mm. soft r and b it was vibe fm and joy fm and so radio good at the time you know i was encouraged to play the same kind of tunes mm. and then one day i thought that no this tunes the people who will be listening to it will be asleep mm. in half an hour mm. and there are people who are working so mm. i'll play for them so i started playing mid-tempo high life music wow at the time and wow. then one day fifi bouncin came along and told me that hey this thing that you played a couple of days ago everywhere that i drive everybody's listening to radio oh, wow. at night because they love the kind of music wow and that spurred me on to play some more and then eventually i was gathering listeners even for the morning show wow so then my boss pulled me back to 7 p.m mm. and eventually the drive was mine and mm. periodically i did the morning show and all of that interesting but i did the drive for a very long time on radio gold wow mm. why did you leave radio gold because you seem to be at your prime at that time yes i i actually didn't see myself as being at my prime mm. i thought that uh, when her pfm came up mm. i was convinced that there were some broadcasters who were coming on board mm. like kwami sefakai mm. like fifi Bansin, mm. and pioneering a radio station for me i thought from all the experience that i've gathered at radio gold will help me to be a part of these giant pioneers of that radio station mm. so that was what motivated me to leave and i i told my boss about it that i have an offer to work with happy fm as a programs director and he said okay you can please yourself actually that's what he told me and wow I, yeah yeah, yeah I, wow yeah so wow he yeah did, he, didn't, he didn't try to talk you about no, no 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 he said that if you think that's all right for you go ahead that was what baffle told that's you. that's what he told me what so obviously I thought that okay then let me find this opportunity and see how my role can help make a big station mm. uh -huh. but after i joined 
I think that Kwame declined coming and then Fifi Bouncing also declined because I talk they, they, they were talked back at at Peace FM mm. at the time. So I was left alone in the saddle. Oh and, my god. And oh my now god. now I try to make suggestions as to who we can bring on board and then and same now be I remember I even suggested that Hey, I found some giant guy around Takrade called Black Rasta. Oh, yes, yes, I yes. I listened yes, to him yeah, and yeah. he's killing. Mm. I mean, mm. when we mm. bring this guy to Accra, he will kill things here. Oh, my God. And one of the executives said that, oh, Rasta for the SNA, didn't buy video, so because he is a wee station. This is 3FM. <laughs> what? <laughs> one of the executives at the meeting, that's what he said. Wow. So I you know it became frustrating mm. as a programs director i'll be driving around and i hear they're playing gospel music at a time that is not scheduled to play and i'll find that i say director say more gospel because mm. i don't know Uncle here, I want to meet you new off king kingsman right <laughs> yeah at the time mm. yeah so these things got me frustrated and i felt that no this is not what i signed up for mm. you know so within the fourth month i was out of fifth Six months, I was out of the place. I was told that you walked out. You didn't resign decently. You just packed up your things and then you left. True? Uh, well, I, 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 I don't want to recollect the incidents mm. that happened at the time. But I think that uh, I don't regret walking out at the time. Mm. Because the, the situation was so frustrating for me. I felt that I'd been imprisoned in a, in a way and my creativity is being stifled and all of that so you know i couldn't i couldn't live that wow mm. did you try to go back to um, uh, um radio gold after that no i didn't actually i i went to kumasi to film that about series wow one of the series that i started interesting after, after i, I know after that you went back to happy fm after some time yeah yeah yeah. And what was the inspiration there like your second coming my second coming was because the business had changed hands that's true and those who were taking over were more into the media front mm. and they understood media better than probably the previous owners but right. Yeah, Happy FM number two, part two. It was something that I was really interested in. But mm. I had family issues in the UK. You know, I had serious family issues I needed to attend to. That time of my life was very, very difficult for me. So I need to move out for a while. And, you know, it was going to be for a while. So I told them, this is my situation. And we agreed to cancel the contract wow mm. so the contract was cancelled yes and you walked off uh yeah i i, I the contract was even cancelled whilst i was there mm. yeah because i spoke to them telling them how difficult my situation for my family and all of that i needed to put things together interesting mm. it was all over in the news that you were at kesben and we're expecting that the ground was going to break and swallow everybody there in kumasi what happened and you walked off Kesben as well? Right. Mm. That was what I was coming to. Mm. After Kingsman mm. situation, I decided to go to Kumasi to shoot my Dada Boat series. Mm. So when I went to Kumasi, I lived in a hotel called Aseda House. Mm. Not knowing there was a radio station in the building. So people were like, oh, Master Richard is here. Meet the owner of Aseda House, who also happens to be the owner of Kesben Radio. Right. So we met a couple of times and he said, oh, listen, I'm starting this radio station. Mm. And if you're going to be in Kumasi for a while, then you need to support me, you know, put it up. So, mm. you know, on a friendly basis, I agreed to support the marketing department, the programs department, put up a morning show, put up a marketing department and all of that for mm. him. I remember... Around the time I met most of the business executives in Kumasi, around, or offered dinner that you know told them about the station. A few things were done at the time. Right. When I see the Kesben logo right now, it's one of my brain children actually. You know something that I created for the station. So wow. After a month or two, 
now there was a decision whether you are going to live here mm. and continue or you want to go back to Accra because going there wasn't to live there for good because mm. I've built everything around my life in Accra. It was going to take something so huge to get me out of Accra to live in Kumasi to work. Mm. And mm. we couldn't agree on the terms. So wow. mm -hmm. so it wasn't like I went to work there okay. and okay. then had to harm. We couldn't agree on the terms because... I felt that leaving everything I've built here and transporting, and it, it would take a lot of commitment to be able to build a radio station mm. if you want to do it. Mm. You know, there were people even saying that the man has bought me a jet right. that will fly me from Accra every day <laughs> to come to Kowasi to, to work on the radio. But we just couldn't work on an agreement that was suitable for both of us. Right. So you are to you are to you are to break off somewhere along the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I needed to come back to Accra to su survive. Taxi driver money could not even buy you a shoe. Tell me which radio station gave you the biggest offer? Happy FM? Uh, Kesben? Which one? I think that I've never had an offer of radio. Mm. Yeah, like buy me with big money i've never had that offer not even happy fm happy fm give me something i won't call it offer the he told me that was for us to start something i mean if in the, in today's terms it will be around nine thousand cities wow yeah, yeah, yeah. nine thousand yeah, yeah if if you okay. if if you bring that money back today, okay, today, I get it. Be around mm. nine thousand CDs, you know. Mm. And the man wasn't somebody. The man was someone that even before I started working at Happy FM was my friend. Mm. I used to go to him. We used to have a chat, you know. He used to give me gifts and all of that sometimes. So Kingsman, Kingsman. So it wasn't like okay, buy me out. Mm. I was looking out for the opportunity of pioneering a radio station because of the way he spoke to me mm. that hey this thing is going to be with you you have to help build it mm. when it becomes big you know i i will always be there for you i can't forget you and from the friendship that we had i trusted that so i wasn't going to say that pay me this amount or buy me a car or buy me a house but like i said kesben didn't make me any offer i've come I, I, from england i came back to work on adom hmm. fm that one too i didn't ask for any offer hmm. so i've not dealt with having a big offer to work on a radio station i remember your days at adom but first and foremost what's your relationship with kingsman right now yes sometimes we meet in traffic we park and talk hmm. and all of that i think that we've put all that happened behind us in, oh he himself has put the radio business behind him so that's right so there's no point mm. but i think that uh there should have been more commitment from him mm. to have convinced some of us to leave our radio stations to come work there because because i felt that he let it go too quickly Okay, I remember your arrival at Adum FM. The expectations were so high. You were, you had a producer who was supposed to provide the music and even direct the music and all that. Why did it also not last long? Right. I had gone to live in England for seven years. Mm. And, you know, it was just my mom in this country. Actually, I was considering coming back to the country wasn't part of my thoughts around the time. I have five children out there and they were my focus. You know, they were playing football. I was doing football coaching and all of that. Then all of a sudden, one day Daddy Bosco calls me mm. and invites me to work with Adum FM if I want to. And I say, yeah, because I want to come back home, but I needed some motivation to come back home. Mm. So working with Adum FM will be brilliant. And I was looking at Adum FM as multimedia Joy FM. Right. Because the capacity that Joy FM has is a big capacity that if I want to work with multimedia, that's what it should be. So I love the challenge. Mm. So I admitted to come. Mm. You know, they promised that they were going to help me settle down. I remember. Marco Krekumante was also providing yeah, music and all yeah, that yeah. for you. Ma Ma Mark was there. I'll come to that. Mm. I remember they interviewed me on Skype mm. in UK. Mm. And 
Echikwam asked me what I was bringing to the table. Right. And I said that all my radio life have not been produced. Mm. So regarding what I'm coming to do with multimedia and the excellence that multimedia is perceived to mm-hmm. be at, mm. I'll get that production team mm. that will support me. And that alone will make me a different presenter. Right. Because I've learned radio mm-hmm. at that level and I know what production does to a presenter's work. Mm. So that was what I told them at the interview. Now, I come back here, mm. start the work, mm. and there was no production team. Oh, wow. Yes. Fennec of Blessed Memory. Yes. Looking at the situation, because it was my son, mm. looking at the situation said that, no, let me find you some boys mm. to help produce. So he got me some guys to help produce. Mm. Now I had to pay them from my own pocket. Oh, wow. When I asked for them to support their allowances and transport, the program's director was not happy about it. Mm. You understand? Some of the comments I heard was, mm. we are paying, they are paying you more than most people are paid here and you are wow. asking for some of these things. So, wow, really? Yeah, oh, sorry. Mm. So, so, for me, it was becoming difficult, mm. you know, to excel in that direction. And I've also come with a different mentality with radio. Mm. You know, I, I wasn't the radio presenter I used to be mm-hmm. before then. Yes. I've learned a lot more matured radio broadcasting. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So what it would have taken was with time and then engineering it to work perfectly with production and all of that. But I didn't have the time. I think the the I I don't situation lasted two and a half months. Yes. And two and a half months wasn't enough time for somebody who's been away for seven years mm. to turn the tables around. I'm not a magician. Were you sacked or you walked off? I didn't walk off. Mm. I, the contract was cancelled. Actually, I had a situation with the programs manager. Okay. And then there was a suspension for a time. And mm. then eventually, uh, Chikwam called me and then we decided to, to... Cancel the contract? Yes. Oh, okay. So you were suspended for a time? Yeah. I see. But what role did Mark Okreku Mante play in this? I thought he was supposed to be directing the music and all that. Mark was directly working with Hits FM at the time, mm. not directly with Adum FM. I don't mm. know how the situation was with the hierarchy at the time, mm. but Mark played a role in, you know, getting me on and all of that. Mm. But the rest production and all of that was left to me by myself you know mark wasn't somebody i remember that for the two and a half months three months that i worked there i saw mark in the studio just a couple of times Mm. because he was doing other things you know away from what i was doing Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. are you hoping to return to radio or it's over for you no no not at all i mean i'm i'm still in radio of course i run a kente radio yes promoting high life music yes i mean not high life music ghanaian music ghanaian music yes because i believe that ghanaians have their own taste and style of music right we need to project mm. as part of our culture mm. and her life music is one of the proponents i mean one of the uh, major elements of our culture we need to support project and make sure that that genre of music stands on its feet stands on its feet you know we, we we're having people playing uh, what do you call it afro beat and all of that but all of that stems yeah, from, from her life, life music. Right here. Yes. You understand? Mm. So for me, I won't downgrade the change here because her life has grown from the E.T. Mensens, Onyines, into Guitar Bandstand, then it turned into Boga Her Life, mm-hmm. and then Hip Life came mm-hmm. around. Mm-hmm. You know, so the, the, there was going to be another progression. Yes. And, yes. You, know, you, you know, but all these progressions have identified with her life, High life yeah. except for Afrobeat and mm-hmm. I find that unfair unfair and, yes and we need to work hard mm. to bring her life back to the books you know Kwame Nkrumah in his days wherever he traveled mm-hmm. 
took a band along to introduce her life music exactly to the world mm -hmm. why are we not doing it mm -hmm. now if, if he did that 60 years ago exactly he mm. did that he did that mm. oh so master richard is my guest in the studio mickey Osai Beku. oh my god <laughs> and we are having a very interesting conversation yeah. now you are in this house media general after hours what happened to after hours yes after hours was in my own production mm. it was produced by a gentleman uh and he called me to present it mm. so the agreement was between himself and media general but mm. at a point he told me that uh, he couldn't work with media general again and mm. he was moving the show to another station mm. and i thought that i wasn't placing my brand in that direction anymore moving from one station to the other with projects that wasn't the the main uh, motivation but i also felt that uh, some of the considerations around the show mm. should be taken seriously so mm. we parted company around the time that he decided to leave media general but you know i brought a show here mm. is is one of the down times of my career wow and you know it's sad that it, it, it is with media general mm. but because of your open-mindedness yes that's right and your objectivity that's right i want to talk about please it. talk about it feel free i developed a show called the wow show the wow show yes this is 3fm and this wow show was a similar show like uh, after hours mm. so I came to TV3, spoke to them to collaborate mm. so that we bring the WOW show out. Mm. There was an agreement drawn that I would produce the show, TV3 would do the marketing mm. and bring sponsors in. Mm. I produced 15 episodes of the show Wow! that was shown on TV3. Mm. And I've not had one CD in return Wow! with regards to marketing. Wow. You understand? And I'm saying this because it's, it's on a platform. Yes. I feel sad about it. I mm. want to borrow money to produce the show. Wow. And this is the show where I built a set and all of that. Even from your pocket? From my pocket. Even some of the episodes, I need to bring uh, audience in, not less than 20, uh, 30, 40 people wow. to sit in there, sometimes feed them, refresh them, refresh them, and all of that. Oh my Apart God. from the production team mm. to produce a show like that, for, for. There was one episode where I think it was Breast Cancer Month. Mm. My mom was a breast cancer victim, mm. you know, took one of her breasts off. So, mm. I'm very passionate about breast cancer. Mm. So one episode, we brought in a, a clip where somebody was showing how to check the breast mm. and all of that. I was called here and I was told that the show has been taken off because of the breast of the breast I put in there. Mm. And I tell you, I have a video that was shown in TV3 that was worse than what I showed on my show. Who called you on the day? Um, it was... Uh, uh, this gentleman was uh, forgotten. You name. don't remember the name? Yeah, but mm. one of the programs. Mm. Directors. directors here, yeah. okay. Mm. So we're taking the program off because, because of the breast? Because we showed breast cancer checking on the show. And I said, no. This, Do you remember this if it was an old woman's breast or a young woman's breast? <laughs> <laughs> a middle age was breast. <laughs> this is 3FM. <laughs> a middle age, uh, you know. I'm it, sure if it was an old woman's breast, they would have truly said that, well, this is really breast cancer. But a young woman standing breast <laughs> with the nipples pointing in that direction, I'm sure they would probably think that it was a little. You don't remember if it was. No, I think that yeah. it wasn't too. It was. It was kind of. A decent breast, mm. I should say, a decent breast to present. Okay. And it was it was a young lady, middle aged woman, who was showing which places to press, to touch, to check mm. whether you have a lump in your breast or not. You understand? So I felt that this is of national concern, mm. and that's what I'm saying. Subsequently. TV3 showed a video worse than that. Worse than that. Mm. And I have the video there. 
Wow. One day, if we have the opportunity, I'll put both videos on there. And the program was taken off. The program was taken off. Nobody told me anything. You were never warned about anything no, like no, that. No, no, no. The program was taken off. And and it's it's one of the low points of my career. I've been trying to find somebody to talk to with regards to the debts that the program accrued to me and how probably I can do something to recover some I the you know I try to make appointments I don't get anybody to talk to right now it's a very different um, media general yes, we have I can a see lot I can see I can see we that. have a lot of money now right after this my producer is going to walk you into the CEO's office but and you will talk about this and probably wow would come back again inshallah and yes yes so we're looking forward Insha to that inshallah yes wow that must have been very very painful so you walked away with um, nothing you know my god a few days ago I came to collect my wood for the set that I built and some of the destroyed furniture that I furniture that I left here, most of them are messed up. I came to collect them. Not, oh, a few days ago? Not about a week or two ago. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. And when was the WOW show done? WOW show was uh, 20... Uh, 20. That, 2020. That was when the COVID situation came. Mm. Actually, we signed a contract for one year, mm. but because of the COVID, we couldn't shoot mm. till after some of the uh, whatever they put in place was taken off. Mm. Then we shot. So I had just three months left of the one year contract, actually. So after the 15 episodes, it was due for renewal where I thought that the program was growing now to attract the sponsorship and all of that to cater for the losses, but it's part of life. So you came back and, and took your wood? Yeah, yeah, I came And the broken chairs? Yes, I came Interesting. <laughs> oh, my God. This is 3FM. <laughs> so yeah. the program was taken off because of breasts. Yes. Oh, my God. What breasts can do? What breasts can do? <laughs> Interesting. This is 3FM. <laughs> Richard, Richard, <laughs> Master Richard is my guest in the studio. Oh, my God, have mercy. And it's interesting. Now, hear me. Yeah. Hear me now. Listen. Um... You are a man everybody knows in Ghana. Yes. You are a man every woman would like to have. Are you married? What's your history with romance? I <sighs> mean, this heave of a sigh, mm. she tell you a lot. Wow. Yes. I think that I, I would have loved not to talk about mm. that side of my life. Wow. But one of the things, the reason why I want to give mm. something on that mm. is the fact that some of the professions that we go into, some we somehow sometimes affect our romantic lives. Wow. This is 3FM. And I believe that my acting career is none different. Mm. Because of the rules that I play and the things that I do, the perception of me is different and mm. sometimes people even come close to you yeah and they still can't divorce that level of perception mm. uh -huh. they even want to treat you like the perception they have of you on on, on, on tv on tv wow you know and this is something that has bothered me for a long time but i've learned lessons out of it and i'm trying to make it work so you know, I wouldn't want to go into details my romantic life, but I have a family, I have lovely kids that I love, and I believe that one day soon you'll the, be married. The, yes, inshallah. one day soon you'll be married. Inshallah. Wow, have you been married and divorced before? Yes, once, twice, thrice, uh, once. once, once, once. Wow, and you hope to find love again. Inshallah, what is the kind of woman you want? Intelligent woman, intelligent. Yeah. It doesn't matter if she have caps or not. Uh, Kefs don't put food on the table. Wow. 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 <laughs> you want an intelligent woman? Yes. Does it matter what religion she belongs to? No. I am not religious. I'm spiritual. Spiritual? So, yes. So, I don't do the religious stuff. Mm. Mm. Miki Osebeko, a.k.a. Master Richard, is here. This is 3FM. The other day, I listened to a tape by one where you see mm -hmm. uh, accusing you of taking money from him and promising to take him abroad yeah. and all that, and it never happened. Did you hear that tape too? No, no, I've not heard that. Oh, never? No. Nothing like that? No. 
But have you ever taken any money from uh, somebody like Wayose? Uh, and uh, you wanted to send him abroad and it didn't work? Uh, I don't know where the story is coming from. I would love that Wayose himself is here. But Wayose is somebody I... Even the name Wayose, I suggested it to him. Wow. Yeah, the name Wayose. If you ask him today, he will confirm. I give him the name Wayose because... Mm. I was trying to put him uh, somewhere on the ladder through my show, Dada Boat. Mm. You understand? So we did a lot of things. He comes to live in my house, mm. you know, for weeks, months. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. So I don't know where this story is coming from, but probably he, the YUC himself, can confirm there's a lot of things that are going on between myself and him okay and i don't think that mm. money situation has been a problem mm. Mm -hmm. mm. well in that tape he was saying that he took money from me master richard from misika mame nawaji misika and blah blah so nothing like that ever happened you never um, promised that you were going to take him abroad no i think that at a point in time, we mm. were talking about going to shoot mm. that about abroad. Oh, okay. So most of the artists who were rehearsing towards, I have some scripts that were all rehearsing towards going there to oh. perform. So, oh. I mean, uh, we even made we even made the steps to do that. Mm. I didn't just find the sponsorship. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Even at a point in time, he, the YUC himself, said his brother was going to help us and all of that. I mean, I don't want to go back into the details of all of this, but I wish that one day he comes to confirm either that or that. But I think I've lived a life that is beyond that. So okay. uh -huh. I don't want to go into specifics what I've done for YUC and what has gone on within us. Uh, we, we talk. He calls me big brother. Don't forget me. Oh, why you see? We we talk a lot, and you know he's doing a few series on his thing. That you still I, have a good relationship with him. Very good relationship. This is three FM. Very good relationship. So when you heard him say things like that, how did you feel? I've not heard him say that. Actually, mm. I'm being honest. Okay. I've not heard him say that. Okay. So right. if he's saying that, mm. maybe after this interview, maybe. But I've not heard him saying that. So if I play a tape like that from him, you are, you are going to be surprised. I I should be, but I... You wish I couldn't? I shouldn't? Well, right. okay. I, 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 I should be because I mm. feel that, mm. you know, yeah. You've gone beyond and, that. Yeah, I've gone beyond That's that. That's true. This mm -hmm. is 3FM. All right, so this is my brother. And oh. this, this, this issue, we are even talking <laughs> almost 20 years. Yes. Yeah. Are you getting my point? That's so, true. Uh -huh. When YUC came around me, they are talking about 20 years mm. and all of that. So I see you make so many different adverts, and sometimes I sit back and I, I'm like, what is the magic Mickey or Sebe Kun has? All the big adverts, all the big billboards all over the place. I see you there from Macarel all the way down to <laughs> Chichinga. All, almost every big advert. Recently, yeah. there was a pre Christmas advert. And you were the champion of the thing. Tell yeah. me, what's the magic? Uh, I'll give praises and thanks to the Most High. Mm. I think that he has favored me with that level of talent. Because I always tell people that for me, acting is spiritual. Mm. Yeah, because uh, some of the things come to me uh, on our ways. There are things that... I just met a guy in your studio he was telling me something that I told him way back and I was like, wow, I said that because I don't even remember saying it and how even that fell into my mind to be able to say it. Mm. I believe it's a favor of God. There are a lot of things that I say on set, I say in scripts that are given to me on the spur of the moment by the spiritual uh, superpower that looks after me. So some of these things i i always give the glory to the most high interesting and you know apart from that he has also given me the wisdom to learn the skill mm -hmm. the best way i i'm a learner that's right uh -huh. i spend sp sleepless nights learning things that i need to do like kinti radio the engineering all of it about it even arranging of the tables 
and all of that were done by myself. And it's based in London? It's now here. Wow. I brought it here now because it's promoting her life music. And I started off in London and it's now here. So all these skills are things that I learned on my own. Mm. I edit with every software. Wow. You know, I, I do camera. So, and I, most of these adverts that you're talking about were written and directed by myself. Interesting. So, wow. So, it's just God's gift. You must be making a lot of money from all these wonderful adverts that from mosquito coils all the way. I mean, recently, the, in fact, you were also signed as a brand ambassador for one of these wonderful brands around. You're making money, right? Uh, I'm surviving. Okay. I'm surviving because yesterday I was telling somebody that you know, if you make it all money, mm. all money, you won't get there. That's right. You understand? Mm. There are things that I do. There are even TV commercials that I shoot that sometimes the owner of the brand does not give me as much as to shoot the quality mm. that I want. Okay. But I need to find my own means mm. to stretch it to get to that level. Interesting. Irrespective of what the brand owner is offering mm. i've done this many a times and yeah. it's because i want some i want a certain level of quality in my product mm -hmm. you understand i'm not saying that i've gotten to my best yet but i'm still working it out so that every time what i put out is good enough mm. and a lot of thinking go 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 through that mm. yeah mm. Honorable Miki Osebe Kun yes, was sir. also the assemblyman for Ayi Ayidiki. 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 Oh my God! Yeah. Are you hoping that you'll come back into politics? Yes, if you take out the tricks. Mm. <laughs> this is three FM. <laughs> if the tricks, the tricks are taken out. I think that uh, if I get the opportunity, right to play some level of leadership role, mm -hmm. I would love to do it because I feel that what has failed black people is leadership. Leadership? Yes, leadership. Because I can't understand where there's a house that has so much and the children are struggling. Mm. But you see the fathers and the mothers driving big cars, mm. living in their lives. But the children don't have dresses to wear. Mm. They don't have shoes to wear. Mm. In that house, I think it looks like a mad house. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> this is 3FM. So, Were you a good assemblyman? Uh, Did your people like you? Did you leave or they made you leave? I didn't recontest for okay. the election. But I think around the time that I worked as an assemblyman, I did a lot of work mm. with regards to work at the assembly. I worked in various subcommittees mm. at the assembly. Mm. And I also worked within the community with, you know, that area is a bit of uh you know not the ae class right area so there were a lot of things uh, i remember one time when there was a fire outbreak in the house mm. they had to park the fire tender somewhere and be carrying water mm. to the house that is the situation mm. there when i was an assemblyman i was thinking that and that has always been my thoughts, that some of these things, we should correct them, mm. no matter the pains that we'll go through. If we need to create a road to a house or road, road to houses, that will make it accessible when disasters of these things, right? We should be able to do them. Mm. You know, in Ghana, it will be difficult for people to agree to these things. But listen, if we don't do it now, you know, we can't correct it in future. Mm. So these were some of the things I used to talk about at the assembly and the work that I did there. So supported kids to go to school. You know, I still support a few children, even in that area. Uh, after 20 years mm. of being an assemblyman, I still have children I support to go to school wow. in that area. So, wow. you know, I was very 
uh, much into uh, education over there. I visited schools most of the time, worked with children from the schools, you know, and all of that. So it's, it's arguable. Mm. I mean, I, I don't think that everybody will say that, oh, he performed well. Some people will say that, oh, he didn't do well. But uh, God is the judge. God at the is the judge. At the point in time, mm. I couldn't recontest because I was finding education outside. So I couldn't, you go, couldn't for, okay. go for a second term. Ah, wow. This is 3FM. Miki Osabeko is my guest. I'm yeah. going to be talking about marijuana, ganja. Yeah. Yes. Um, the Supreme Court has spoken. First and foremost, do you smoke marijuana? Uh, well, I can't declare here. Mm. It's, it's unfortunate whether I do or not. Mm. Mm. I, you know, and I believe that uh, because of my support for marijuana, mm. you understand, I can't damn it in any way. I think that it's something that is better than what they are selling off as cigarettes mm. and all of that. That's mm. one. In regards to health, two, it has economic importance. That's right. You know, and three, it has an international appeal. Mm. So I think that any country that is blessed with that kind of plant should make the best out of it to support its people. It should be legalized. Of course. This is 3FM. I don't understand why they should legalize certain things and not legalize marijuana. Mm. You understand? I Just the other day, there was a guy who... Uh, parents came to me and uh, they found a piece in his purse and that uh, they need to pay some money to get him released out of the jail. Mm, mm. And I'm like, wow. Mm. Something that shouldn't, should be sold for people to make money and taking care of people, they are criminalizing it and sending people to jail mm. for... Now, the LGBTQ and all of that, they are even considering legalizing it. Mm. Do you support it? How? Mm. Because you've lived in England where it is uh, legalized. Yeah, I saw guys kissing at mm. the bus stops wow. a couple of times. Mm. I, I think that from, from this part of it, I would want human beings to learn from animals. Because I think animals, as far as sex is concerned, are more mature than our present human race. Mm. Wow. Mm. Interesting. This is 3FM. We are winding up. <laughs> In fact, we have just about two and a half minutes more to go. I wish we had another 10 hours to talk. Yeah. But you want to coach the Black Stars. Do you have the experience? Do you have the qualification? Yes, I have the qualification. Mm. But not a lot of experience okay i still believe that if no ghanaian coach is able to bring the world cup to africa i'll be the first to do so interesting yes i i am a member of the football coaches association in england and i have level two of uh, the english football football coaching certificate is that the same certificate pep guardiola has no Mm. It's more advanced. Oh, okay. I think the to explain the path, the it's it's four levels, mm. and I've done two levels. Mm. So there are other two levels that I need to clear to be able to get to that level, and that's what I'm I'm hoping to do in the next few years. So you understand football? I play football, and I love football, and I understand every bit of it. Who would you say has been your best Ghanaian? Footballer ever of all time, I will give it to Abedi Pele. How about you? Abedi Pele is the name. Interesting. This is three. Abedi Pele is the name. I mean, Abedi Pele is the name. Mm. Yes. What about him? His skills, his fighting spirit, his strength on the ball, and you know his knowledge of his position on the field makes mm. a difference. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. All right, so we're about to go. Um, which of the political parties are you going to vote for next year? Akukudru party. 
<laughs> this is 3FM. <laughs> I, th I think that I think that uh, I'll keep that until the day of voting. But, you know, I'm on the I'm at the point where I might not even vote, depending on what the situation looks like. But, Interesting. But uh, I think that leaders have failed Africa. Leaders have failed Africa. Mm. Um, uh, the, the funny, funny face. What's your story with funny face? Funny face, uh, that about was the first series to launch him on TV. Mm. Yes, there were a few of them. Victoria Zuga and a few other actors uh, launched their career through that about TV series. Mm. So it was one of the productions. He played the son of Super Audi. You know, I loved Super Audi when I was growing up. So when I got to produce, I got him to perform on that about. And Funny Face came along to play his son. Mm. So I am one of the pioneering producers of his career. Mm. <laughs> Wow, yeah. wow. And with his mental issues, I mean, um, what, what do you have to say about that? I think that, listen, he needs support. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Because you might not know, all of us are going through similar issues, but not advertising it. I go through my own issues as well. I'm, I'm not saying that people see me and the outlook looks very strong, but I know what deep inside I go through. You need to have either the mental strength to fight on your own or you need support. Have you gone through that point before? Yes. Mental breakdown like that? A lot of times. Oh, wow. You I'm, ended up at a psychiatric hospital? No. Okay. I didn't. Mm. Uh, once once I, 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 I sought for support, mm. I, I sought for help. So by talking to professionals, psychiatrists, and all of that, mm. but yeah, but you know, so what, I was, mean, what was the issue? Sometimes you get depressed. Mm. Sometimes you feel that things you can do, you are not able to do. Sometimes you're going through relationship problems. In your case, what was it? Depression was one of those. Okay. All yeah, right. depression was one of mm. those. And uh, I found out that it's not abnormal for what I do to go through that once or twice in your life. Mm. Yeah, but you need to build that mental strength to be able to sustain yourself and all of that. So, Funny Face needs help. And just like many other... Uh, I'm trying to start off a, a, a foundation to use my opportunity because if you listen to Titi's last interview, you mentioned that uh, of the industry, I'm the only one who supports him mm, and all of mm, that. Mm. And I do a lot of supporting from the background mm. for performers who think that, oh, Master Richard, we see him on TV, he's doing well and all of that. You know, I'm not doing that well. Mm, <laughs> but mm. what I'm trying to do is to find a way to organize support, to support my mates mm. in the industry I get it. who are going through difficult times. Mm. And difficult times mostly are not just financial. Yeah. Some of them are emotional. Yes. Some of them are mental situations yes. and a lot of things. So I'm trying to put resources together to facilitate this because a lot of us are going through different things that's why most most uh, performers sometimes turn to drugs to survive. That's because, right. Mm. Because of sometimes loneliness. Mm. Loneliness not, doesn't mean there are no people around you. There, mm. are pe there might be people around you, but you're still lonely because That's of true. your thoughts. Mm. Uh -huh. So there are a lot of things professional creative artists are going through that need support mm. and includes emotional support and all of that. So we need to work at that. I want to thank you so much for coming. I do appreciate you, Mickey Osebeko, a.k.a. You. Master Richard. Oh my God, have mercy. He was one of the first people to say, hey, <laughs> there is this guy in Takra. We need him in Accra. Yeah. Oh my God, have mercy. Yeah. And today, my brother, my sister, we are <laughs> together right here. Now, if this uh, radio station invites you to come and join the team, would you come? Why not? It's a, it's a, big, it's a big family and I would love to. I've done... Apart from the WOW show, I um, I MC the maiden edition of Odofiva, mm. which is a brand from the house. So wow. 
So there's a lot we can do together. So you are on the way here. <laughs> Inshallah. Thank you so much. I do appreciate you, Mr. Richard, for talking to us. We love you. Is there any reggae song you love and I'll play it for you before we go on? Any one of your choice. Wow. Any reggae song of your choice. Natural Mystic. Natural Mystic. That's cool. Bob Marley. Yeah, man. I'll give it to you. <laughs> yeah. I thank you so much for coming and I do appreciate you, Master Richard. Thank you so much. And thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I'm sure we're going to find time and talk again in the sure. interim. God bless you and thank you so much for coming. Thank you too. I appreciate it, my brother. Mm -hmm. All right. So my name is Black Rasta and I want to say thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you. In the background is Master Richard's music. Bob Marley and the Wheelers. <laughs>